All right, everybody, welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. This is gonna be another one of our case study videos, and here we have a CGC 7.0 copy of Batman 251, one of the ultimate best Joker covers of all time from Neil Adams, and some of the best Joker writing, reintroducing the Joker from Denny O'Neill. Um, just an all-time true classic for those DC fans. I mean, this one's a little controversial because some people are like, well, it's not a first appearance, but I would say it's the first appearance of the modern Joker, um, given how significant this is and how the storytelling in that uh, mid to early 70s really kind of transitions the character from the slapsticky Joker of the 60s. So uh, one of my personal favorites and one I'm always happy to give a face facelift to. Uh, this particular copy at a 7.0 does have some non-pressable defects. There's a very slight amount of edge wear here. We can see uh, there are several spine tick lines. That's just dust on the top here, but we can go down and count those and see them. Uh, but what I think is really holding this book back and what's reflected in the CGC notes are all this foxing. So, I mean, it's just everywhere in this book. Now, we're not pr probably going to be able to get all these really deep spots to be 100%. But what we would like to really do is clear out these broad patches and see if we can get this thing a facelift that way. Um, I don't see any major creases, though. I don't see any major tears. Um, the staples look good when you look at them. I mean, there might be a little bit of very minor staple tearing up top there. Um, but, you know, those look those look really solid. So I think that this thing, after uh, some of our blue light treatment, it will hopefully be in store for a bump ski. And so I'm going to recommend giving it a solid crack here. And as always, we're just going to start right up on the top edge and just try to bust those posts. And then once we get one, we're just slide over to the other one. And then just give it a little bit of a screwdriver twist on down the sides. This one's being a little bit more stubborn than with where it wants to split. There we go. All right, and that's about all you need. Uh, again, I use these as carrying trays around the uh, the pressing space here. And so I just need to get that get that label out, and then we're going to slide the uh, the comic book out in the inner well. And we're just going to go right up past the camera. There we go. Check that out. Brand new carrying tray. So I'll put that over on my pile, and then we've got our book here. Now this one, unfortunately, is a little bit tighter on the inner well than I might like. So that gap down at the bottom is not as big as some of the other ones. And we're just going to go through the bottom of the well there with our razor blade. And when in doubt, go slow. Yep, I did get through it, which is what I was worried about, but that's good. And then this corner off. Perfect. Check that on out. Use my scissors here to um, get a little bit of a path. And since this one was a little bit tighter, I'm just going to give it kind of two there to make sure I'm minimizing the stress on the book. See if we missed anything. I think this one's looking pretty good overall. I'll we'll have that micro chamber paper on the inside to go find. Make sure we get that out of there. Such a great book. Might just be one. There we are. Fantastic splash page. Now this thing uh, does have some light foxing on the interior. You can see across there. It also has a little bit on the back. I think I saw. Yeah, right there. So we might end up treating this thing on the interior and the exterior. The good news though is somebody uh, already looked like they dry cleaned this. So I'm going to skip doing that on camera. You know, there might be a little bit of schmutzies up here. 
but that also might just be damaged paper. But this thing looks pretty heavily and extensively dry clean. Certainly I don't see anything that we really need to scrub on. So uh, I'm gonna grab some pictures of this for before and afters, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the blue LED process. I'm gonna start with three or four blue LED overlays on the front cover and the back cover, and then I'm gonna see what it looked like and see if I wanna treat the interior or not. Um, I might have to there depending, but we'll see how much carryover whitening and foxing mitigation we get. By the way, you can see that this thing was cut really interesting because you can see the lines on the blade there. So I must have had a nick blade, um, but they carry all the way through the book right on those spots. So uh, that's all just manufacturing. Shouldn't really affect the grade much. Uh, so yeah, very cool on that and uh, stay tuned. All right, howdy folks. Time to take one pre-press look here at this Capia Batman number 251. Looks a lot better, particularly in that Joker box. Again, I didn't use a mask or any kind of protection for the rest of this. I didn't deal with any of the laser cut tools. What I did was just use the blue light overlay with, uh, in this case, mostly 1% hydrogen peroxide. I did three of those treatments, and then I did a um, fourth treatment with uh, 3%. Mostly I was trying to hit some of these really light spots up in here that didn't quite come out. Um, but because of the age of this book and because of the quality of the interior pages, you know, I don't think that this one's worth really pushing a whole lot farther or harder um, to risk it. So hopefully we got, you know, enough of that light foxing cleared up to get this thing a bump ski. Um, the concern with continuing to push this again would be that you're going to really over bleach the the cover and then that'll look disingenuous particularly as you can see some of that light boxing there on the interior so we want to make sure that that again matches some of what is on that cover so i think that this is about as far as this one should go it did get four treatments in both the front cover and the back cover and so i do think it looks a lot better it should present much nicer and i think it should get a bump ski from there all right so this one's going to go in the press with our normal press for a book of this era, so backer board in the middle, uh, card stock under the front and the back cover, 15 minutes at 155, and we'll take a peek at it when she's out of the press, so stay tuned. All right, folks, here we are with one final look at this copy of Batman number 251, so I think it's significantly improved from where we started. Uh, it is not perfect. You know, we stopped this one after four exterior treatments, and if you look very carefully in there, you can see some of that very light foxing. Um, you can see some on the back too, particularly the really dark spots along the spine. Uh, I did take before and after pictures. You know, because that foxing is also on the splash pages, I think it's probably best not to overdo it. Uh, it's much more difficult, I think, to remove that foxing from the interior uh, because it also affects the page brightness. So it's just something to pay attention to. Uh, this one we're gonna send to CGC. Even though I always, or almost always, forget to do this part on camera, I do slide these higher value kind of key books, particularly when they're higher grade, into a golden age fullback mylar uh, on its way out. And so hopefully this is a trick that you can find useful. I do like this because it does provide you know, an extra layer of protection from this book. You can see that there's full back backer board there, full back backer board over here. And so that book, regardless of what corner it's impacted on, it's going to hit this outer golden age board before it hits the comic on the inside. So it's just a little bit extra uh, protection for how I pack uh, the, the kind of key issues here. So let's keep our fingers crossed while this thing is on its way to a round trip to Florida. And we'll see what the end result is here for what for you will be mere seconds, but for me will be uh, likely weeks. So stay tuned. All right, folks, CGC is back with a verdict on this copy of Batman number 251, very famous Neil Adams, Joker's Five-Way Revenge. Let's see what CGC said about this book. Oh, uh, 9 point, or sorry, 7.0 to a 9.0. Not only that, this one went from off-white pages to white pages. So who's laughing now? All right. I love this book. I'm super thrilled this one got a nice Top Comics Bumpski. What I'll ask you to do is thumbs up here on the video to give us some YouTube support and click that subscribe button right down below to make sure you get to see future Bumpskis here from Top Comics Pressing. I think this one turned out just like it should have, and I know I've got a big smile on my face.